Patrick Haggerty here. Happy 4th of July. Um, happy Independence Day. Uh, we're blessed to live in the United States of America. I believe it's personally one of the greatest countries that's ever existed on the face of the earth. And one of the reasons that it has existed in such a fashion is because of our connection to and our founding on the principles from God's Word, the Bible. Now, I realize that it's not uh, popular right now in our weird, ignorant, foolish culture to say that somehow our founding fathers and the leaders of our nation um, have had a deep connection and a desire to follow what the Word of God says. However, that's inaccurate. Facts are facts. And we're going to look at some of those facts today. It's simple to discover. Um, the desire and the love for God's Word that our previous leaders have had, specifically past presidents uh, that we'll look at today. Um, some of those uh, people and information you can find out about in the, a book by Ray Comfort uh, that I came across. He's an evangelist. I'm just going to read to you some quotes today from previous presidents and let their quotes identify just how much as a nation we need to stay anchored to the Word of God. So we'll start with the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. He said this, quote, No educated man can afford to be ignorant of the Bible. A thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education. Teddy Roosevelt. How about our seventh President of the United States, Andrew Jackson? He said this, That book, the Bible, is the rock upon which our republic rests. Our 25th president, William McKinley, said this, The more profoundly we study this wonderful book, the Bible, and the more closely we observe its divine precepts, the better citizens we will become, and the higher will be the destiny, our destiny as a nation. Woodrow Wilson, our president, 28th president, said this, There are a good many problems before the American people today, and before me as president. But I expect to find the solution of those problems just in the proportion that I am faithful in the study of the Word of God. Man, past presidents, whether they were believers in Jesus Christ or not, recognized the value of this book. Thomas Jefferson, the third president, one of the founders, said this, I have always said, and always will say, that the studious perusal of the sacred volume, the Bible, will make us better citizens, better fathers, and better husbands. Herbert Hoover, the 31st president, said this, The whole inspiration of our civilization, the founding of our country, springs from the teachings of Jesus Christ and the lessons of the prophets. To read the Bible for these fundamentals is a necessity of American life. As Americans, we need to come back to what it says in the Bible. How about our sixth president, John Quincy Adams? I say to you, he said, search the scriptures. The Bible is the book of all others, to be read at all ages and in all conditions of human life, not to be read once or twice or thrice through and then laid aside, but to be read in small portions of one or two chapters every day and never to be intermitted unless by some overruling necessity. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our 32nd president in the United States, said this, We cannot read the history of our rise and development as a nation without reckoning the place of the Bible and the place that the Bible has occupied in shaping the advances of the republic. It is the foundation of strength and now, as always, an aid in attaining the highest aspirations of the human soul. How about Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th president? He said this, Hold fast to the Bible as the sheet anchor of your liberties. Write its precepts in your hearts and practice them in your lives. John Adams, second president of the United States, one of our founders, said this about the Bible to American citizens like you and I. The Bible is the best book in the world. That's our president. It contains more than all the libraries I've seen. Suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book, and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts there exhibited. 
Every member would be obligated in conscience to temperance, frugality, and industry, to justice, kindness, and charity towards his fellow man, and to piety, love, and reverence toward Almighty God. What a utopia, he said. What a paradise would this region be? That's our president. How about Ronald Reagan, the 40th president of the United States? He said this about the Bible. Within the covers of the Bible are all the answers for all the problems men face. The Bible can touch hearts, order minds, and refresh souls. How about George Washington, our first president? It's well known that Washington had private devotions, both morning and evening, during which he was seen in a kneeling position with the Bible open before him, as was his daily practice. Washington is quoted as saying, Direct my thoughts, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb. Purge my heart by the Holy Spirit. Daily frame me more and more into the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ. That's our first president. He also said, It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. How about Dwight Eisenhower, 34th President of the United States? He said this, again, our president to us as citizens. The Bible is endorsed by the ages. Our civilization, America, is built upon its words. In no other book is there such a collection of inspired wisdom, reality, And hope, this is our president again, speaking to citizens like you and I. He said this, and I quote, It takes no brains to be an atheist. Any stupid person can deny the existence of a supernatural power because man's physical senses cannot detect it. But there cannot be ignored the influence of conscience, the respect we feel for the moral law, the mystery of first life, or the marvelous order in which the universe moves about on this earth. All these evidence the handiwork of a beneficent deity. That deity is the God of the Bible and Jesus Christ, his son, unquote. How about the 30th president of our nation, Calvin Coolidge? He said this, The foundations of our society, of our nation, and our government rest so much on the teachings of the Bible that it would be difficult to support them if faith in these teachings would cease to be practically universal in our country. I'll read it again. He said, The foundations of our society and our government rest so much on the teachings of the Bible that it would be difficult to support them if faith in these teachings would cease to be practically universal in our country. And listen, we've let go of the basic teachings of God's Word, and we need to come back. Also, You might say, well, what would Congress do? Well, Congress declared in 1983 that the year 1983 was the year of the Bible. And in their resolution, our Congress, Senate, and the House of Representatives said this, quote, The Bible, the Word of God, has made a unique contribution in shaping the United States as a distinctive and blessed nation and people. Deeply held religious convictions springing from the Holy Scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation. Biblical teachings inspired concepts of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Finally, I want to close out today with the presidents, with one of my favorite presidents, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. He wrote a lot about the Lord. And he wrote this to you and I as American citizens. He said this during the time of the Civil War. Quote, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has given to man. Unquote. He also said in declaring a day of national fasting, prayer, and humiliation in 1863, quote, whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth 
announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. Quote, we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We've grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever known. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom or virtue of our own. Our president said, intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. He said, finally, it behooves us, then, to humble ourselves before the offended power, before God, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. And it reminds me, where we want to close today is in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. What our president just said to us, Abraham Lincoln and previous presidents just said to us, is a good reminder for us today. And it reminds us of what God says in his word. If my people, who are called by my name, do what? His people, his children, you and I as followers of Christ. What are we to do? Humble ourselves. Pray. Seek God's face and turn, repent, turn from our wicked ways. Then God says, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. And that's my challenge and encouragement to us on this Independence Day. May God grant us a hunger to know what he says in his word as a nation. It starts with you. It starts with me. We need to reconnect to what God says in this book. If you don't yet know what God says in this book, you can get started. You can let this Independence Day be the day that you began to start reading and understanding what he says. If we want God to heal our land, which we desperately need, and to forgive us for our sins, and to hear us from heaven, then as his people, we need to take the advice from previous leaders, previous presidents who have encouraged us to come back to the Lord. It's this book that anchors our life as American citizens. God bless you, and I hope you have a great 4th of July.